One morning I'm so hungry and my mom doesn't wake up, the terrified child said to the cops. Sarah, four, awoke to see her mother was still asleep. Her mother always got up before her, so this was really odd for her. She did everything to rouse her mother up, but to no avail. Welcome to Amazing Truth Channel. Do not forget to subscribe and activate the bell button to receive all new. Now go to the story. Sarah started to question whether there was a problem. She called the only number she could recall, but her mother was still asleep as the hours went by. A small girl who had called 911 to report that her mother hadn't woken up all day was the target of a search by a female police officer and her crew. That evening, when the authorities broke into her home, the situation took a terrible turn. The police station's personnel were busy than normal that day, looking into a murder. Every hotline in the city was full of calls that were diverted to different crises. An unusual call from a small girl then occurred. 911? What's your emergency? An unsettling stillness stretched across the backdrop while the dispatcher replied, and then there was a loud wheezing sound on the receiver. I need to eat, a small child said. Mommy doesn't wake up all day, and she started crying. Where are you? I'm not sure. If I'm in trouble, mommy told me to call 911, the child said, her voice trembling. The girl was then asked to provide further information about her location by the dispatcher. Calm down and what's your name? Sarah. Sarah, can you tell me your address? There was a solemn quiet before Sarah provided the dispatcher her previous address, but she didn't remember where she was at the time. Sarah, could you please let me know where you are right now? Could you explain it? Despite not knowing the address, the little child managed to provide the officer with visual cues as to where she was at that moment. Outside, I can make out large gray homes. A large, irate dog is barking outside. Outside are woods and a damaged gate. Okay, Sarah, continue where you are. Help is being dispatched immediately. After then, the information was sent to Officer Linda and her group. They set off right away to find the young girl and reach the first place she provided. After marching to the address, the police searched the area for any clues that might fit the girl's description, but they found nothing at all. When Linda knocked on the door, no one picked her up. Peeping through the glass window, she observed that the interior was dusty and gloomy, as if it had been vacant for a very long time. After checking with the neighbors, Linda discovered that a guy, his wife, and a small child called Sarah used to reside there. Do you know where they are now? Linda inquired. No policeman. A guy said to Linda, Mr. Jake's wife and children fell into extreme poverty six months ago after he passed away in an accident. They were evicted by the landlord for non-payment of rent. Although I am unsure of their address, a buddy of mine reported seeing them 12 miles away in a destitute neighborhood. Linda headed off for that location, following the hints. The region was without electricity, making matters worse as it grew darker. Linda called out to a fellow cop, Hush one second, as she heard a dog barking faintly not far from where they were. She remembered Sarah telling her about a dog that would not stop barking in the area around her. That might be the case. Let's head in that direction. Linda told her group to follow her, and they eventually came to a modest, run-down home. In order to see clearly, Linda switched on the flashlight and saw a shadow of someone standing close to the window. When she peered nearer, she spotted a small child screaming and pleading for assistance. A stray dog was running toward the police and barked non-stop outside. With haste, Linda grabbed a stone and threw it at the dog, frightening it away. She then pried open the door and went inside, making few assumptions about what else may be inside. Hey, it's okay, it's okay, don't cry, Linda consoled Sarah as she raced to her in tears. The girl appeared famished. I need to eat. Mommy isn't waking up, she repeated again and over. After putting Sarah in the car, Linda brought her outside. Give her some cookies, please, she assured her crew. I'll be right back, and then returned inside to find out where Sarah's mother was. She looked everywhere in the home for the woman, but she was unable to locate her. Linda continued searching and discovered a basement entryway. Sarah's mother was comatose on the floor when she entered. When Linda arrived at the scene and tried to rouse the woman, she felt as though her body was chilly. Sarah's mom had passed away. As soon as officers barged in, Linda called emergency services and social workers. 
An ambulance arrived a short while later and removed the woman's body for an autopsy. Since Linda had been under the impression that her mother was sleeping, she was unsure of how to break the news to Sarah. How do I tell her her mother's dead? Linda pondered. Mommy, where are they taking my mommy? Sarah took off after the ambulance. In an attempt to console her, Linda halted and gave her a strong hug. Mommy will be all right, sweetie. Be a nice girl and pay attention to my advice. No, I'd rather visit my mother. Get away from me. Sarah sobbed and held her tiny stuffed animal. Shortly after, social services informed Linda that the daughter would be placed in foster care. The police officer didn't like the notion for some reason, and it bothered her to consider the effect it would have on Sarah. Five, when she found out her mother had died. No, I'm going to bring the kid home tonight. She needs to eat, tidy up, and relax. Tomorrow, I'll take her to the shelter, Linda urged. Linda drove Sarah home that evening. My God, darling, who is this? When Linda's husband Jacob answered the door and saw that Linda had a sleeping Sarah in her arms, he was taken aback. Honey, I'll tell you everything, but not right now. I'm worn out. Can we have our meal first? Later that evening, Linda told Jacob the whole story. We still don't know how she passed away. Is the girl aware of this? Jacob inquired. No, I'm not sure how to inform her. Still, she believes her mother is doing well at the hospital. When she learns the truth, her heart will shatter. Oh dear. But how long do we keep her with us? Jacob inquired. That evening after Sarah had gone to sleep, Linda had a weird thought. Darling, I was thinking, why don't we adopt Sarah? She said. We have spent a great deal of time trying to conceive. What's wrong with my body is unknown to me. I'm unable to conceive despite the testing being clear of issues. It found out that Linda and Jacob were infertile for a number of years. They made every effort to conceive, but in vain. Linda had even given up on having children at one time and was concentrating only on her work. She assumed she would never become pregnant since she was always depressed and tired. A few months later, Sarah was adopted by Jacob and Linda, who celebrated their happiness with a grandiose party for friends and relatives. The party hall erupted in laughter, and Jacob called for a toast. I believed that meeting Linda was the happiest day of my life, he said. However, I was in error. The moment I saw my wife rocking a small wonder to sleep, I was overjoyed. Honey, can we be her parents? was the question she posed to me. I was unable to resist the joy of becoming a father. Happy little family of three, cheers. No, 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 honey, wait, not three. Linda abruptly cut off to a surprised Jacob. We're going to be a happy little family of four, she said, passing him an envelope with a test result that was positive. Jacob was the happiest guy on earth and could not believe what he saw. Linda's prayers were magnificently fulfilled just in time. Happy little family of four, everyone. With floods of happiness streaming from his eyes, Jacob lifted a toast. Take a look at her. She is a tiny angel in need of love and guidance from her parents. She'll be offered for adoption and she'll be taken in by an unknown couple. How about we adopt her? She truly is a lovely little miracle. How do you feel? Jacob stared at Sarah, who was sound sleeping between them, thinking about what Linda had said. He recognized that this was the happiness he had been waiting for his entire life when he sensed their purity and presence eliminate the emptiness in their lives. The small act of kindness you perform makes someone who is grieving feel better. After learning that Sarah was an orphan and had lost her mother, Linda brought her home and gave her comfort. She later adopted Sarah because she desired to nurture her in a family surrounded by loving and supportive parents. Love, compassion, and miracles will rise from a compassionate heart that reaches down to uplift others. Because Linda did not want to give Sarah an orphan's life, she adopted Sarah. After several unsuccessful tries, she fell pregnant because of her kindness and affection for the young child, which gave her hope. Family is about someone who holds your hand and pulls you out of the dark. It has nothing to do with blood or DNA. Jacob came to see that family and children are about more than just blood and biological ties. They are about love and support when Linda convinced him to adopt Sarah. If you like the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, 
and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss and see you in the next story.